Y'all, my scraps are out of control. You see it? You see that clip? It's insane. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. And in today's video, I'm making a dent in my... No. No, I'm not. Who am I kidding? I'm not going to even make close to a dent in my scraps, but you asked how I process them, so that's what I'm going to show you. Hang around. Let's see what happened. Scraps. You've got them. I've got them. What do you do with them? Let's well, spend 15 minutes and get them processed and into a useful state. That's what I do. I spend 15 minutes at a time going through the scraps, processing them, getting them cut down to pre-cut sizes that I will use, and I sort everything by color. My brain works best when it's sorted by color. I don't sort by design or by designer because that's not how I think. If that's how you think, then absolutely work that way but I'm gonna show you what I do. First, I'm gonna start with the blue bin because it's the most full. It's always the most full. It's the most full because I don't like to work with blue, but it's also the color that every manufacturer prints. It's the most popular color printed in quilting fabric, followed closely by green. So always lots of blue and green scraps for me, more blue scraps because I tend to not go back to it. But that's neither here nor there. I have lots of blue scraps. I'll choose whichever bin is the fullest, go to that, start there, unless I need a quick hit, and then I'll go to the black and white bin and cut all those up really quickly and empty the bin. Yay! Sometimes a quick win is what you need. This is the best place in the world to use a timer. You set it for 15 minutes and you do a little bit and then you're done for the day and you move on to what you want to work on but those 15 minutes add up incrementally until all of a sudden you've got a huge pile of useful fabric that you can go to and empty scrap bins. So I'll start there. I'm going to put 20 minutes on the timer. Actually, I'm not because it ticks and picks up on the mic and that's a real pain. So I set 20 minutes on my phone on silent. And I set 20 minutes so that I can talk to you while I do this and explain what I'm doing. Let me start by saying I already filmed this part, <laughs> but I forgot to plug in my mic. So here we are again, a little pre-sorted, but you'll get the point. I'm going to go through the blue bin and I'm going to pull out the bigger chunks. I'm going to pull out just enough that I can get finished in 15 or 20 minutes. You don't want to get elbow deep in the scraps, get overwhelmed or called away by something that you need to do right now and then it be everywhere and you come back and you look at it and you go, oh, and you can't get to your work table. That's not good for anybody. So choose an amount that you can complete in about 15 minutes. And you'll get the feel of that as you do it, but start with fewer than you think and work your way up. So I'll go through. These are already pressed, like I said, second take. I use three tools for cutting. I use my stripology ruler, the large one, the XL. I use my AccuQuilt one and a half inch square die and the two and a half inch square die. Do you need any of these tools to cut scraps? Nope, not one. I have them, I use them. They allow me to work in an efficient and quick manner and to actually do the job. Knowing myself, I'm not going to sit with a ruler and cut them all down, but it is absolutely possible to do. You can cut with your rotary cutter and your ruler to your heart's content, and you don't need to spend another dime. Will you cut faster with the stripology ruler? Absolutely. Do you need it? Not even a little, but I have it, so I'm gonna use it, and I'm gonna show you how I use it. Before I get to that, I pull out any scraps that I can't get, a 10 inch square, a five inch square, a two and a half inch strip out of. So these guys will all go into a pile for the two and a half inch squares AccuQuilt die. And these guys, these smaller bits, will go into a pile for the one and a half inch AccuQuilt die. And I'll deal with those later. I pile them all up after several sessions of scrap processing and then do all the AccuQuilt stuff all at once. Super easy that way. When you divide processes into like with like, you'll go much faster. Context switching takes 
time. So now let me go to the overhead camera and show you how I cut my 10 inch squares, my five inch squares, and my two and a half inch strips. If you notice a theme, these are all pre-cut sizes. So they'll work with any pre-cut pattern. They'll work with any other pre-cut. Now we'll go to the overhead camera and I'll show you what I do. Okay, I have my larger pieces. I have my stripology ruler. I'll try to keep glare to a minimum, but I can't make any promises. Here's what I'm looking for. A 10 inch square, a five inch square, a two and a half inch strip. Sometimes I'll cut a one and a half inch or a two inch strip if I've got enough fabric, but I don't worry too much about it. But these, that's what I'm going for. Now, clearly I can't get a 10 inch square out of this piece. So I'm gonna put that here for my five inch cuts. This I can't quite. It doesn't quite make it to the 10 inch mark. So I'm gonna put it with the five inch cuts. Five inch cuts. That's gonna be too close. So I will put these guys, these two, in a pile for two and a half inch cuts because it's too close to get a five inch square out of. Though this one isn't. This, let's see, it comes in at eight and a half, so it's going in the five inch pile. I can get five inch squares out of those corners. This, however, I can easily get a 10 inch square out of, as can I in this piece. And let's see on this one. Yes. Yes. So these, We'll hang on for a minute, and these, for the strips, will hold on for a minute. And I'll start, and I'm going to work largest to smallest. So I'll work and get as many 10 inch squares as I can. Well, let me just do it and you'll see. And I'll cut at the zero mark and the 10 inch mark. And because I didn't have my ruler lined up for all the way, I'm just going to cut through those edges. All right. This part, all right, first, safety first. This part is scrap. This part goes right in the trash. Easy peasy. Now, I have this piece left. Do I have enough to cut a five inch square? Or five inch strip so I can get five inch squares? Absolutely do. This is large enough to be a string. So I'll put that in a separate pile for strings. Put my five inch strip right up there to go with the others in just a few minutes. Now, I have these. 10 inch strips. And you see, they're all weird. They're all weird. And the only place I have a 10 inch section on this one is right here in the middle. So I'm gonna use that section as my guide. So I line all my cuts up nice and straight, nice and even. Lay my ruler on top or your 10 inch square ruler or use the lines on your mat. Do whatever works for you, absolutely. And don't let anybody tell you that you're wrong because you're not. Cut at my zero mark. Cut at my 10 inch mark. Cut at my 20 inch mark. And let's see what I got. Salvages. Do you save salvages? I don't save them for salvage work, but I will put it in the string bin. This is too little to save. He's going in the trash. So now I have this piece, which clearly is not a 10 inch square, but I can get five inch squares out of that. So I put it with the five inch strips. Two 10 inch squares. These are too tiny. One, two, three, four, 10 inch squares. And you turn it over and make sure you got all your edges, which I did. Four, five, six, and this will go 
in the five inch square pile. Six 10 inch squares. Now I'll pull the strips over and I do the same thing for five inches. Just at five inches instead of 10. These smaller pieces where I'm going to have to cut individual squares out, I'll put in a separate pile and not put those with the strips. I have four pieces of fabric. That's eight layers. And I know I can cut through eight layers because I'm using a 60 millimeter rotary blade and it's a brand new blade. So super easy, I know it'll go through it. If you're not comfortable with the accuracy or the safety or you're using a smaller, smaller rotary cutter, stick with six layers. Now I lay it on here and I'm looking here for the zero and the five. And then I will also cut at the seven and a half mark for the ones that go all the way across, so I get my two and a half inch strip. All right, so now what we have are strings, but not this guy, he's too tiny. And little trashies. Five inch strips and some two and a half inch strips. Let's see, that one's two and a half. That one's short strings. That one's two and a half. That one's two and a half. Beautiful. Now, these five inch strips, so we're gonna line them up. You can line them up on a line on your mat if you want. Because I'm cutting by the lines on the ruler, I don't have to worry about if they're straight on the mat because I'm going to align it to the ruler. Now, that is, that is six layers of fabric. So I'll start a new row, but I just have to stack it edge to edge right there. Do it all in one process. This is the beauty of the Stripology ruler. It does allow me to go very quickly and do a lot at one time. So I'm gonna cut at the five inch markers all the way across. And then this is six layers of fabric times one, two, three, four. Four layers of fabric times one, two, three, four. So that is 48, 38, excuse me. Math are hard. They're really not. 38 charm squares in what, like three and a half minutes? You guys were here, you know. All I have left are these little dudes. And all I'm gonna do is cut these into a reasonable, two and a half inch strip and some strings. So I'm going to cut, I'm gonna cut at the zero mark and at the square, which is two and a half. The squares on the rulers all the way across are your two and a half inch increments. So in just that amount of time, which was, oh no, my timer didn't, my timer didn't take, which was less than 10 minutes. I got, oh look, this one's crooked. So what I can do is I can cut it back to where it's two and a half inches, or I can do what I'm going to do today and throw it in the strings bin. That makes one, two, three, four, two and a half inch strips. 38 charm squares and six 10 inch squares in about 10 minutes. That's all there is to it. That's what I do. The smaller pieces I put aside for the two and a half inch squares and the one and a half inch squares that I'll use the AccuQuilt die with, I'll wait until I've got a whole pile of them and then I'll set a timer for 15 minutes and I'll dispatch those the same way. I'll stack them all up on the die machine, run it through, process all my little squares and put them away. But that's the key. Guys, what do you do now? I sort everything by color. I sort all of my usable fabric by color. All of my pre-cuts by color. So I have a bin for strips. Mostly two and a half inch, but there are some other sizes in there. And right now, I put them away, click, it's done. I have a box, oh, it's almost full, for five inch squares. It's messy, guys. It's not perfect. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It works. 
put my new little stack, 40, 38 charm squares. That's nearly an entire charm pack that I got out of my scrap bin in just about 10 minutes. Guys, that's, that's like 10 bucks. I have one of these for every color. You might ask me what possessed me to cut my entire stash and scraps into pre-cut sizes. Let me start by saying I did it during the pandemic and dang it, I needed there to be something I could control and this was it. <laughs> So now I have these in every color, in 10 inch squares, in five inch squares, in strips, in strings, and in two and a half inch squares. My one and a half inch squares all get mixed together. I'm not completely insane. That's it. Hang on, I'll see you back at the other camera. So that's it, I told you it was simple. I cut things into pre-cut sizes because pre-cut patterns abound and pre-cuts are easy to use and there's no need for me to pay for a new pre-cut when I have an abundance of scraps that I can quickly and easily cut into whatever size I need. It's what I do because it's what works for me. If that's not what works for you, you do something different. Speaking of something different though, I wanna know how you guys process your scraps or. Do you process your scraps? Do you even save scraps? Recently, I've heard of people and they're like, I don't keep scraps. And it broke my brain a little bit because I didn't understand that. When I started quilting, that's what you did. It was before bundles and pre-cuts and it's a long time ago, guys. <laughs> when I heard someone say they don't save scraps, I had to reset my point of view and understand where they were coming from. And it was interesting. So I wanna know, do you save scraps? How do you save scraps? Then do you use the scraps? That's the key. That's what really matters. If you're saving scraps and you're never going to do anything with them, by all means, pass them to someone who will use them and love them. But but if you want to do something with them, maybe you can start this way. Do it 10 minutes, 15 minutes at a time, and you're off to the races. Grab a handful of scraps, give them a press, and cut. I use the Stripology Ruler, the AccuQuilt dies. Do you need those things? You do not, I will repeat, you do not need fancy tools to process scraps or to make a quilt. People did it for hundreds of years with a needle and thread. But if you have a ruler and you have a rotary cutter, which I know you do, you can process your scraps into whatever sizes will work for you. Whatever unit size you will go back to and use again, that's the one you wanna cut. This is what works for me. Let me know down below what works for you. While you're there, like, subscribe, share, do all the little things that I appreciate so much because they're such a big help. Most of all, remember that you you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.